Jim Henson's Muppets have stood the test of time as immortal creations that brought joy and laughter to so many people over the past number of decades. And certainly, when one thinks of the Muppets, Kermit the Frog is the first one people remember. He is the leader, after all, the frog trying to hold together this wild band of animals and things that populate this comedy troupe. He is the face of the Muppets, and one of the first characters to have been given life by Henson. He is a character who has evolved quite a bit over the years, yet has also retained his optimistic view of the world and charming sense of humor. And I wanted to look at how his career has impressively progressed. Kermit made his debut appearance in 1955 as part of Jim Henson's first television series, Salmon Friends, which aired on a local NBC affiliate station in Washington, D.C. At that point, Kermit was actually more of a lizard, and as you can see, he did not have his signature collar yet. However, he is unquestionably Kermit, with his genuine enthusiasm for the power of media and Henson's unforgettable voice. You know, I bet some of the smart alecks in the audience have already figured out what you're going to say when I talk to you. But never mind them, just relax and be yourself, you know? Kermit's star eventually started to rise when he began appearing on more nationally broadcast programs like The Ed Sullivan Show. The Kermit the Frog we now know and love really came into his own when Sesame Street hit the PBS airwaves in 1969. He was a prominent member of the cast, often helping out the likes of Cookie Monster, Big Bird, and Bert and Ernie with whatever problems they might have or lessons they want to teach the young audience. He would even act as a reporter, interviewing fairy tale and classic storybook characters. Sesame Street was also where he performed his famous song, It's Not Easy Being Green, for the first time. Kermit would sporadically pop up now and again for a while, but due to legal reasons, he has not appeared on the show for ten years, as the Sesame Workshop does not own the rights to our amphibian friend. You think the behind-the-scenes deals that happened to get Spider-Man into the Avengers movies was wild? They're probably nothing compared to what has to be ironed out between Sesame Street and the Walt Disney Company. The other reason Kermit became less prominent on PBS was because Henson had even bigger plans for him. While Jim Henson was pleased with Sesame Street and its role in enriching children's lives, he saw his Muppets as entertainers for everyone, including adults. So with Kermit, along with his fellow puppeteers like Frank Oz, Richard Hunt, and Jerry Nelson, Henson devised an entire comedy troupe of Muppets. A few television specials were produced for ABC that Henson hoped would lead to a variety show. Eventually, British television impresario Lou Grade thought there was a potential audience in Henson's puppet creations, and agreed to back The Muppet Show. Kermit served as the central figure of The Muppet Show, both as a showrunner and introducing the host and segments. The series would also feature segments backstage, with Kermit trying his best to wrangle everyone, fulfilling the necessary role of the straight man. What helped make the Muppets connect with the audience was seeing the relationships that grew between the personalities. Jim Henson made us watch a pig and a frog fall in love and not question the oddity of this interspecies romance. Miss Piggy's frequent thirst for the spotlight allowed for humorous contrast with Kermit wanting the Muppets to share the stage. There was his close friendship with Fozzie Bear, which often had Kermit attempting to tolerate his corny jokes, and he also had to deal with Statler and Waldorf heckling on the balcony. Kermit also had to put up with the occasional fragile ego and creative notes of his celebrity guests. However, even Kermit was not above being mischievous and showing he was just as wacky as his friends. Whether he was getting in on the goofy sketches or even tricking the other Muppets, I think he often realized he shared more in common with his show buddies than he would like to admit. There were even points where he would lose his cool, which is bound to happen when your main job is keeping an unpredictable and silly group of Muppets in line. He seemed to especially grow tired of Miss Piggy's antics from time to time. That's a bold-faced lie, Piggy! I will not stand around while you do dumb things like that, Piggy! You have done that to me too many times, Piggy! I will not stand for it! I will not stand for it! Nonetheless, Kermit served as the linchpin and the necessary anchor for the Muppets, and was the vital element that would invite the audience in their living rooms to buy into the crazy world Jim Henson and his team put on television screens. With the success of The Muppet Show, it wasn't long before it was decided to bring The Muppets to the big screen, and with Kermit again as the star. The Muppet movie detailed the sort of origin story of Kermit the Frog, and also introduced to the world his signature song, The Rainbow Connection. That song captures everything about Kermit's personality, 
who is hopeful outlook of the world, and how creativity can be found in the most unexpected people and frogs. It's a fitting way to start the movie, and shows why Kermit is so inspired to start his journey to Hollywood. Rainbow Connection also serves as an anthem for Jim Henson and the many pursuits he attempted throughout his career, not just with the Muppets, but also with movies like Labyrinth and the ways he attempted to elevate puppet technology with his company. In the late 80s, Henson started to meet with Disney head Michael Eisner about the possibility of the Mouse House buying the Muppets. He felt so strongly about Disney and the Muppets working side by side, he even directed the Muppet Vision 4D attraction for the Disney MGM Studios theme park. Sadly, Jim Henson passed away in May 1990, leaving Kermit without his voice and creator. His son Brian and daughter Lisa became the new heads of the Jim Henson Company, and in the years since, have done their part in keeping the Muppets brand alive. Steve Whitmire took over as Kermit's puppeteer and became associated with the character for a new generation. Thanks to the Henson children's management skills, the Muppets were fairly active in the 90s, making movies for both Disney and Sony Pictures. One of the more underrated Muppets productions, which came out around that time, was the short-lived ABC show Muppets Tonight. It was an attempt to revive the Muppet Show format, and I think it did it quite well. While Clifford became the new host, Kermit was still a major figure, acting as the show's producer, and once again responsible for keeping everything under control. Following the cancellation of Muppets Tonight and the box office failure of Muppets from Space, Kermit and his friends weren't as active in the new millennium. Part of this was the characters being purchased by German media company EMTV. But even after Disney bought the Muppets in 2004, it seemed they weren't sure what to do with them. Disney produced a few TV movies like The Muppets Wizard of Oz, but for the most part, the Muppets were not regarded as a major franchise. Funnily enough, YouTube of all places did a better job of bringing them back into the public eye than the more traditional forms of media. The Muppets began making exclusive videos for YouTube, the most popular of which was their cover of Bohemian Rhapsody. This was such a wonderful way to bring back people's fond memories of the Muppets and get people talking about and sharing one of their productions. The excitement spurned from these videos might have played a role in convincing Disney to bring the Muppets back to the big screen. Frank Oz wanted to rewrite a script he had developed with Henson and writer Jerry Jewell back in the 80s, titled The Cheapest Muppet Movie Ever Made. But in the end, the decision was made to go with Jason Segel's pitch. Despite known for more risque comedies, Segel wanted to make a sincere and touching family musical that would pay tribute to their legacy and show they could be viable big screen stars again. While there were some behind-the-scenes objections from the old guard regarding the occasional joke here and there, the end result ended up being an innocent and charming comedy, aided by Brett McKenzie's catchy tunes. In the movie, we encountered a Kermit long separated from the other Muppets, and unsure whether people still care about them. We're so used to a Kermit trying to hold the gang together, and here we see a Kermit who feels he has failed in doing so. And yet, that one moment of hope and inspiration from new Muppet Walter gives him that extra motivation. You can tell how much Siegel and his director James Bobbin care about the Muppets, and wanted his generation to revisit them and for a new generation to fall in love with them. Now, some people have wondered about the strange continuity of the Muppet movies and television series. Why does the 2011 Muppets movie portray the gang as separated for several years and forgotten by most people when they were literally posting videos on their YouTube channel, all with millions of hits? Not to mention the earlier Muppet movies that have the characters seemingly meeting each other for the first time on multiple occasions. I have a personal theory. The Muppet television shows exist in quote-unquote our world. That's why we see the behind-the-scenes goings-on, and why they're often centered on watching the Muppets' stage personas, whether it's the variety show format of The Muppet Show and Muppets Tonight, or the documentary-style filming of their days on the studio lot in the 2015 Muppet series. The movies, however, are full-blown scripted productions put on by The Muppets. This is supported by the bookends of the Muppet movie, showing the Muppets sitting in a screening room watching the film. Kermit's nephew, Robin, even asks him if the events in the movie are really how the Muppets got started, and he says it's sort of an approximation. That suggests that all playing roles in the movies, with their celebrity friends helping with cameos. The Great Muppet Caper has Kermit arrive in England with Fozzie and Gonzo and meeting several of the Muppets, again. 
Corbin and Fozzie are even written as twin brothers, something that never comes up again in the next batch of films. And in the Muppets Take Manhattan, the Muppets are shown graduating from college, and there's even a flashback portraying them as babies in a nursery. In the 90s, the Muppets wanted to spread the acting wings and adapt classic literature, thus Muppet Christmas Carol and Muppet Treasure Island. And then, I guess Gonzo saw Men in Black, became obsessed with science fiction, and pitched a story where he discovers he's an alien. Kermit, being the supportive friend he is, decided he would pass the idea on to Columbia Pictures executives and was shocked when they decided to give it the green light. The 2011 Muppets movie, meanwhile, was Kermit and his pals trying to prove to Bob Iger and the other higher-ups at Disney they could find a sizable audience on the big screen again. That's why Muppets Most Wanted begins with them excited that Disney greenlit another movie. Even the Muppets Wizard of Oz movie suggests all of this by showing Quentin Tarantino pitching a scene idea to Kermit. Bad, bad, Dorothy goes to kick the Wicked Witch. Are you ready? Yeah. You ready for this? Here it comes. Uh, yes, yes. In the face. Yes, that was a real thing that happened. But that's just my theory to explain the Muppets continuity. Let me know whether you agree or not. Unfortunately, the disappointing box office of their last film and the one-season run of their recent television show means the Muppets are back to no longer being a major priority for Disney. The most recent development was Kermit changing puppeteers, as Matt Vogel replaced Steve Whitmire. I'm well aware there are some strong opinions on this, but I'm not going to get into that as I don't work for either Disney or the Jim Henson Company, and so I'm not privy to anything going on behind the scenes. There was a recent announcement that Josh Gad and the creators of Once Upon a Time are developing a new Muppet show for Disney+, Plus, and I think the streaming world is a fitting place for the Muppets to reside. Now, there has been a question about whether Kermit's personality and integrity has been maintained in the years since Jim Henson stopped voicing him. A lot of Muppet fans have different ideas of how Kermit should act. Some feel he should be more of a straight man, others think he should be mischievous, and others think of him as a sentimentalist. I think these are valid interpretations of Kermit's personality, and that's because I see him as all three. That was almost required, as he was the leader, the host, and the producer of the Muppets. Kermit is a dreamer, but also a jokester, often ready with the one-liner. He often tries to see the best in people, even if they're attempting to close down his beloved theater, or want to coerce him into advertising fried frog legs. With Miss Piggy, Kermit can lose patience with her ego and constant romancing while also recognizing her good points. Jim Henson saw Kermit as multifaceted, someone who could even change his tune at the drop of a hat. He could be optimistic for the future, but also have moments of doubt. At the end of the day, Kermit just wanted to try his best to help his friends and try to put on the best show for the audience, whether it's assembling the schedule for a television episode or putting on a production of A Christmas Carol. There have also been questions about whether Disney has been treating Kermit and the Muppets properly. Are they the right home for the Muppets? Admittedly, Disney could have done more for the Muppets in years after the company bought the characters. But Jim Henson always thought the Muppets belonged at Disney, and I think they've done a decent job of taking care of them. They've certainly been trying. The two recent Muppet movies were delightful, funny, and charming in my opinion. I did not see the 2015 Muppets television series, but it seemed like a noble attempt to take the characters back to Henson's original intentions. That show was more so undone by parents not understanding Jim Henson always planned the Muppets to cater to adults. There was also, albeit briefly, the Muppets Courtyard at the Disney Hollywood Studios theme park. We haven't been lacking in Muppets content this decade, and I think there will always be an audience for the Muppets, and Disney knows this. Whether the Muppets are being used or not, Kermit the Frog will always be there, waiting to entertain and bring a smile to our faces. See you next time.